All right, so let's get started. What Xamarin can do for you? Xamarin, do, Xamarin can do quite a lot of things. So yes, uh, I presented myself a little bit earlier. I am Benny Shamalevi, I run a company called Xamariners. And um, yeah, that part is done. So let me go quickly through the history of architecting mobile applications, at least in the Microsoft world. So uh, th there's a silo approach when uh, it comes to a mobile native application uh, development. You can see that Windows is there. You may think that Windows Phone is no longer amongst us, but well, Windows application, um, desktop application, UWP or PWF, uh, or, yeah, uh, or um, P, yeah, um, uh, are still um, around us for uh, are not going to go. So in the side of approach, when you are developing uh, natively on iOS, uh, on um, Android, on Windows, that is going to be Objective-C or Swift um, using Xcode for iOS. That's going to be Java, Java or Kotlin for Android. And that is going to be a C Sharp uh, or L Sharp on Visual Studio for Windows. Well, there's no shared code. Uh, that means that technically you have to rebuild, uh, rebuild your application three times, uh, you'll have to develop it three different times uh, in order just to deploy it to those different platforms. Uh, that means that you will need to have also different teams that would be expert on Swift, on Kotlin, and on C-sharp, and multiple environment, uh, multiple DevOps pipeline, multiple testing uh, funnel, ultimately, uh, the um, effort for building your application will be multiplied by three, a hard three. So Xamarin um, has got a unique approach, which is uh, it acts as a shim between uh, the target uh, such as iOS, Android, Windows, and uh, different um, targets that we'll enumerate later. Uh, that means it can talk to those operating system and the underlying um, application um, development kit and uh, their UI mechanism. Um, just as it was a native application, which makes that Xamarin is actually a native application. Um, no, but you cannot really make any difference between Xamarin application and a native iOS uh, or native Android application. Sure, there will be a little bit of c sharp code running somewhere, but ultimately we're going to be using exactly the same mechanism. We're going to be targeting the same APIs that are underlying. So uh, ultimately what Xamarin does is, hey, let's share all uh, our uh, logic. So all our business logic, accessing services, uh, doing some transformation, uh, event handling, command handling, uh, all this reactive uh, stuff will be done in a unique fashion. Um, and again, you'll have access to 100% of the native APIs, plus you'll have access to 100% of the .NET uh, framework and all um, the beautiful um, NuGet ecosystem. And the performance is going to be as high, uh, no questions asked. Uh, so the only um, difference, uh, again, between an iOS, Android, and Windows application in this um, case is the UI will still be, um, will still be uh, Using the native, um, the, the, the native underlying framework. So, uh, in order to um, build an iOS application, we will still have to use C Sharp in order to address this and just ask uh, iOS to provide a button and just to uh, manage a click uh, for us. And that's going to be the same for Android or Windows. So, ultimately, the UI will still need to be um, rewritten three times, although uh, using the same um, programming language. Right. By the way, if there is any question um, for, for me while I'm uh, going through this, let me know and I'll stop and answer. So three native user interface, but we have a shared C sharp logic, right? And that will allow you to deploy the variety of uh, form factors. So everything you can do in Objective-C, Swift, Java or Kotlin can be done in C sharp uh, using uh, Xamarin. Absolutely 100%. Um, because um, under the hood, um, Xamarin is using the mono, run uh, mono uh, runtime, which is an open source .NET runtime, which allows the .NET to run uh, on Linux and, um, and therefore on the, uh, Mac as well. That has been uh, founded in 2004 by uh, Miguel de Icaza, uh, which is um, uh, running the Xamarin team in, um, for, for Microsoft. Although everything is going to be converging uh, with .NET Core um, when .NET 5 uh, is, uh, will be with us, which is going to be 
uh, well, you know, um, of fully partition. We know that it's currently uh, being a trial in beta. So uh, let's uh, wait for the build announcement and see where it goes. So Xamarin is completely open source. Uh, the source code for the entirety of Xamarin can be found uh, on GitHub, which also belongs to Microsoft. So um, Xamarin can be developed on a two um, ecosystem that can be um, developed using Visual Studio on the Windows uh, PC using Windows operating system, or you can use Visual Studio for Mac, which is going to be running, of course, on Mac. Uh, both are very, very similar, use the same Roslyn um, under the hood. Um, you've got access to the same NuGet packages, can manage your own um, different references, um, and NuGet packages, sorry. Uh, and you uh, have also the data available for both of them. So uh, we'll all cool here, and we'll have a look at both of them a bit later. So sharing the user interface, it's kind of nice to be able to share a bit of code, right? Uh, all our, um, this is logic, but um, how about sharing also the UI? Because I just want to have one team that will be developing my application one certain way, and I don't want to rewrite three times the same thing, which is, you know, it makes sense, right? Uh, developing mobile application is time consuming, um, and, uh, uh, and testing them uh, to ensure the quality is high is, is taking its toll. So uh, it's, it's good to have a similar board for it. And logically, and uh, hopefully, we have, and we do. Xamarin Forms, which is part of the Xamarin framework, well, that's pre precisely what it does. Xamarin Forms allow you to uh, use a unique way to declare your user interface, which is going to be and seen um, render it uh, for the relevant target. So uh, ultimately, that works uh, along the line of, hey, I've got a Xamarin Form button, and under the scene, that is going to render it as an iOS-friendly button, or as an Android button, or as a Windows button, or anything else, really. Uh, ultimately, that is using a rendering mechanism that can be tied to any platform. If you want to uh, render to Amstrad, well, that's going to be a bit complicated, but uh, potentially possible. So, uh, and everything is native, right? More code sharing, all native, all the same. So this is um, what a, a native UI from um, shared code is looking like, right, on the uh, Xamarin form. So um, we have a UI um, rendered on iOS, on Android, and on a good old Windows Phone. Okay, Windows Phone is not really, again, longer with us, although, uh, well, uh, the hardware is certainly coming back. But um, ultimately, we can still uh, pretend it is the UWP or WPF, and, uh, and that will do absolutely fine. So um, this is the uh, C-sharp way to declare the user interface. We've got many different ways that I will be um, uh, working you through. So um, in order to create a text box, well, that's called an entering Xamarin form, and you simply can put a placeholder, like username here, a password, and then a button, which is going to be um, um, with a text login here. and um, and then you can specify colors and then stuff that into a stack. Uh, if you've been doing any UWP or WPF uh, development, you'll be familiar with the stack, which is a top to bottom way uh, to, um, uh, to to lay out controls. So uh, that is pretty XAML standard stuff uh, and, and, and so on, right? And then it's uh, just a matter of saying, hey, uh, all those elements are going to fit into something called here a tab page because there'll be some tabs as you can see at the bottom on iOS and on the top on um, Android, uh, and then uh, you can allocate this uh, UI container, the tab page, to the main page, which in the Xamarin uh, form language means, hey, uh, this is what I'm being rendering right now. So Xamarin Forms doesn't only deploy to iOS and Android, it deploys to macOS. Uh, so if you fancy building some application for macOS, well, you can. Um, if something works on iOS and Android, well, it might be just working on iOS too uh, for your, uh, for, for your, uh, for your uh, business development as possible. Uh, Linux, um, um, yeah, that is also supported. Um, WPF, that is uh, coming back uh, through the .NET Core fold. Tizen is also supported. Um, WatchOS, um, Progressive Web Application, Apple TV, and also the web uh, via Blazor. And I will be talking about that a bit later. So, you know, you can write your application once and deploy to a lot of platforms. 
So let's talk about Xamarin Form Shell. So Xamarin Form is nice and pretty that allows you again to um, have a unique way to declare your, unif, uh, your user interface. So a button or a label uh, or a, a slider or a tick box will be um, de uh, declared once on a unique way, uh, which is example that I will demonstrate. But, uh, but on the target platform, it will be rendering as a native iOS, Android, Windows, the web control. Um, you have uh, navigation that is built in, but setting up uh, all the tab views uh, and all the uh, kind of uh, underlying pipes that uh, modern app development requires uh, will not be necessarily uh, done for you. You'll have just to do that yourself. Well, Xamarin from Shell um, provides a few uh, helpers that allows you to um, get uh, into app development really, really quickly and will provide you uh, the ability to define flyouts, tabs, and navigation um, using also some nice, you know, uh, baked in transition that will not be necessarily the default uh, Xamarin forms um, by doing virtually any work. And actually, we can try a file new straight after that to prove my point. So, um, the way uh, it works is um, there's a concept of shell, which is a markup, um, a markup. Uh, it uses basically markup to define your user interface navigation and how, again, uh, clicking in a button will just open something else. For instance, here yeah, we're saying, hey, we've got the flyout, uh, and we've got an item called style guide that you can see on the left hand side. And once a user clicks on it, I want to go to a page which is called style guide page. And um, you simply need to create your style guide page and done when the user will be clicking on that, um, on that, uh, on that um, item, style guide on the left hand side, you'll be automatically directed to um, the style guide page, which is pretty nice, just no code required, just XAML. Then let's see that you want to um, create some tabs. Again, you don't need to do uh, any code. Uh, you just use a shell um, markup by specifying, hey, I want to have a tab bar, and uh, this tab bar uh, will have uh, multiple tabs. So for the sake of brevity here, we just can, uh, we only um, show the code for once, which is the first one on the left hand side, styles. Uh, you can provide a, um, um, an icon or simply some text. And then uh, again, same as a flyout item, uh, point to the page you would like to navigate to. And finally, um, you have also the uh, shell content. So uh, that will be the top, um, the top tabs, uh, like colors and text. So uh, whenever you change of a bottom tab, uh, that will just change your actual page. Uh, and then within this page, you can have some tabs and, and that's defined through shell content. And for navigation, that's pretty simple. Let's say you want to go from city list page to city detail page. All you need to do is say, hey, Shell, uh, please give me the current instance, and I want to go asynchronously uh, to the detail page. And you can provide some parameters, such as an identifier, that will uh, help your backend to then uh, query a REST service, for instance, that will bring back the details for a city. Uh, let me just uh, get out of here and show you a bit of code. Um, hold on, let me because I'm running on Windows and Mac. Um, let's see if we can see my code here. No, cannot. Uh, what? Why not content? My desktop. Hmm. Finally, that doesn't want to really show up the way I want it to be. Um, please bear with me one second. Share this volunteer. I'm going to stop sharing and reshare again. Here we go. That should be doing the trick. And now you should be able to see my code, I hope. Um, let's get the correct one. And 
and there we go. I'm going to make the text a bit bigger, like maybe 190. That should be big enough. So that is Xamarin for uh, Shell application. Um, as I described a bit earlier, the way the navigation and um, the, your, your uh, yeah, navigation and the way you, you are going to connect your page is done through um, a markup language. In this case, that is just the app shell. So here, for instance, I say, hey, uh, I want to have a shell and it's going to have a login page, a flight page, and two days page, and a booking page on the flyout. So let me just run the application quickly. Ah, yes, uh, I am also going to bring my Android view, so that is uh, looking at my Android device. Uh, I'm using Visor to uh, blast that on the screen, so you should be able to see that. So uh, ultimately, uh, let me just log in quickly. Right, so here, uh, if I click on the flyout, you'll see that we've got my flight today book notification. And this is exactly what we have here, flyout item, my flight, today's page, booking, a notification. So uh, if I click to, let's say, the uh, today item, well, this is where I am. And uh, if we want to have a look at what it looks like, we certainly can. Today's page. There you go. Let's make it bigger, like even 220. Oh, nice. That's big. So let me get back my visor. There we go. So here, for instance, we're saying, hey, um, we want to have a, a collection view. It's just a, a native collection uh, way to um, display some repeatable item in Xamarin. <laughs> so here uh, we can say, hey, I want to show this image here. And then I want to have uh, a date picker, which is that guy here. Uh, that allows me to present this uh, and select a date. And then I want to uh, have a, a button, find a destination, and when I click on it, that is going to be um, calling some kind of command, uh, which is um, you know booking my destination, and so forth. It's not all nice and pretty. So that is Xamarin Form Shell. Uh, you can just easily um, um, organize your user interface and your pages without having to write some code to um, to uh, navigate really. That's pretty useful. Let me go back to here and let me make sure that I'm presenting the right stuff. Yes, I am. So uh, I should be good. Right, visual is another trick that allows you uh, to display the same user interface, uh, let's say, than uh, an Android application by default or an iOS application by default. You know, they've got like different visual styles without having just to um, customize your code. So to give you an example here, you can see um, it's very easy to build simple application, like the one I just, uh, I will uh, show it later, which is like uh, the default Xamarin form application. But to build application that looks a bit more like that, you know, a bit, a bit nicer, or like this, or like that one, or like just like this um, a flight finder application, right? You know, it's a bit more complicated. So ultimately, uh, what Material does, uh, and we've seen that into our login page here, um, is by default, by not applying the um, visual theme, this is what your application will look like, like the left-hand side. By simply applying the theme, it just renders like the right-hand side. And that is, again, exactly the same application that I showed you a bit earlier. Um, that one here. So, oh, sorry, if uh, if I click there, if I go again, just like kill this application and up, 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 and go back to here, um, up, up, fly me, there we go. And that is exactly the same screen that is using Material. Let's put in it. 
So it is a unified way to render, uh, to deliver a curated set of renderers uh, to achieve look and feel across platforms. So um, that is available from Xamarin Form 3.6 and, um, and newer. Material design, you may be aware of. It's a design system for Google prescribing best practices for creating web and mobile UI. Uh, Cupertino will be the one for iOS, right? So this is to promote usability and aesthetic uh, and all that and all that. So ultimately, this is included in um, Xamarin uh, form visual. You just need to use it and that's great. You can also create your own custom themes uh, by using visual and then reuse uh, them across your um, company's application. So another way to uh, write um, Xamarin Forms application is to use uh, the UI extension. So again, uh, what we're using here is XAML, right? We're using um, a markup language that will just say, hey, this is an image, this is a label, that is a button, and, and that's all great, right? Uh, what if you don't want to do that and you'd rather uh, use um, uh, C Sharp to do it? Well, you can do it as we saw at the very beginning of the presentation. Uh, you can use um, C Sharp to declare your user interface, shared or not. Uh, but that is still going to be a bit lengthy. Um, so if you're familiar with uh, Flutter, which is uh, Google's uh, cross-platform um, uh, mobile uh, development uh, framework, well, uh, this is what the kind of uh, of fluent uh, development um, paradigm that is being used. It looks a bit like this, right? So let's compare the first one. This is an entry markup. So in example, we'll have an entry, say, hey, place all but uh, whatever. We want the keyboard to be numeric, and then a margin, you can set it to a variable that is going to be a resource in a resource file, whatever. That the height, um, and if it is an entry within a grid, you can say, hey, I want it to be on the second row, and uh, on the second row, well, uh, there, uh, we want to do a call span of two, so I've got the whole place for it, in case you're on a, gr uh, in a grid, which is by X by two, with two columns, right? And then you, know, you can bind um, your text binding. Uh, so in Xamarin Forms, it's basically a way to say, hey, I've got some data somewhere coming from a model, uh, and uh, I want to consume this data within my user interface. And I don't want to mix both of them. I don't want to mix my user interface and uh, and my data, right? And, and you don't want to have to do something along the line, a uh, entry dot te text equal uh, whatever, uh, and then uh, if you've got somebody, uh, sorry, entry dot place order equal uh, one two three four five six, and then uh, entry dot text equal one two three four five six. And once somebody updates the text, you will have just to uh, listen to that, and then you will have to take this value and then put it back into your model, and then send it to uh, your uh, REST call or to your database or or wherever you want to uh, persist this information. Well, that allows you to say, hey, I've got a variable uh, in, uh, in my packing model, uh, and, uh, which is called, let's say, model for this page. And uh, this model for this page got a registration code property. Well, that's great. So uh, as soon as you've got one available coming from your backend, it will show up uh, in um, your UI. And if a user modifies the, um, the entry, it will automatically be propagated to your model. And you can listen to it in order to fire some events. It's nice and magic. So um, yeah, that, that, that's cool. So OK, that's the way we do it on, uh, on XAML. How about in C Sharp? Well, in C Sharp, we can do the same. So we declare a new entry, and then we just set up our curly brackets to uh, add all these of parameters. And that's going to be looking a bit like this again. That's, if you copy and paste that part, it's going to be almost the same, except that after properties, you use a little bit of uh, uh, fluent um, C Sharp that will say, hey, uh, we are on the row two, on the call span two. Those are methods, not property, because we are, yeah, well, because of reason. And then, instead of using this nice little binding and property and saying that you want it um, uh, to be uh, um, uh, on a two-way format. Two-way format means that, hey, when I've got some information coming from my data source, please update it. And hey, when a user changes something on the entry, please fire something. That's two ways. That's why that would be one way or one way to source, right? So here we do the same thing. We say bind, and we just kind of provide the name of the property. Sorry. Uh, clicked on my mouse, the name of the property, and then you just say, hey, binding two ways. Well, you can do something a little bit nicer by saying, hey, that is a new entry, all the same, I've got my property uh, up to numeric, but then uh, I can say, hey, 
again, uh, row two, call span two, then you can say margin and use it in line instead of a property. Margin is going to be my field margin, and then you can just keep on being fluent and saying, hey, the height is whatever, and then you can keep going. So ultimately, that is less properties and more like helper method in order just to get um, your, uh, your code uh, to make it a little bit less clunky, a bit more readable, I suppose. Uh, what is also cool is you, if you're not using uh, binding, for instance, and you want to perform an action, you can actually, again, all the same, uh, stuff that in line, um, exactly the same way that um, Flutter will be, will be behaving. So that's news that's been uh, incorporated into Xamarin form. It's still in preview quite recently, but if you like to design your application in the Flutter way, that's the way to do it. Another new kid on the block is mobile Blazor binding. So you may or may not be familiar with Blazor. Blazor is a, a new way to um, define web application um, for SP.NET Core. Uh, and it uh, comes with, so it's just, again, if you're familiar with Spy application, uh, with directive, let's say from Angular, uh, or if you're familiar with React Native, it would be very, very similar. Um, and uh, so you can create comp components uh, that can just be used and encapsulate UI and some uh, some um, some logic. It's it's all great. Uh, and uh, the beauty of it, it also runs on um, web assembly. So I'll get to that a bit later. But um, that, that anyway, it's it's a cool stuff. So ultimately, uh, mobile browser bindings are currently experimental, but that allows you to build native mobile application using C Sharp and .NET for iOS and Android using familiar web programming patterns. So this is really targeted uh, for developers that are more web developers and they want to find a similar experience in their mobile development efforts. So it is, uses this Razor syntax, which is like a ISP.NET core um, syntax. Not uh, if uh, you should be. You should know Razor if you've been doing in your ASP.NET MVC development, for instance. It's just a templating language, right? Um, that allows you to insert some code and do some for each loops within uh, within your web um, and declaration. So uh, that allows you to define UI components and behavior of an application. So binding will be there, and then uh, events are going to be there as well. Uh, and the underlying components uh, behind the scene are still going to be Xamarin informed, but it will look like you're building a web application, which is nice. So, uh, an example is pretty much as simple as this, right? So, again, you have the same stack lay layout that you'll have in Xamarin, right? Which is, again, to order uh, your UI elements from top to bottom as you add them. So, here you define a label. That's all cool. Um, it looks a bit like Xamarin form, it's not a problem. What is interesting here is this text here. You've got like this little at, which means that A, hey, there's going to be some code, uh, and uh, you can just like put a string inside that, and then you can notice here this is a variable. It looks a little bit like uh, jQuery, really, isn't it? So uh, you've got a piece of string, and here you've got a variable, and then you've got a button that says on click, hey, uh, please, uh, sorry, up, keep on pressing buttons on click please just call a method called handle click and that's it and on the same file there you go you just put a piece of code uh, and say hey um, I've got a variable which is called count which is that variable that is defined here and I've got a method uh, which is going to be a handle click and when you do that please um, increment um, the variable count of one and, and there you go. And ultimately, that's that's it. You're using a kind of web way of um, defining your uh, user interface and, and logic uh, that are going to be very very um, familiar to uh, JavaScript and web developers. And you can apply that to Xamarin form. So this is in preview, but it's pretty cool. Uh, the ability to do some for each in your Xamarin within your UI. Um, that's that, that's good. That's good. So all the bits that are good with Xamarin, uh, hot reload. So what is hot reload? Well, I'm going to show you what is hot reload. This is the ability to uh, refresh your UI while in development. So instead of having to rebuild your application all the time, you can simply just like um, create, a, uh, sorry. You, you can simply just like modify your code 
and that is going to be changing uh, and being re-rendered on your simulator or emulators all alike. That is for XAML, XAML only. Um, there is another option for non-XAML um, um, project. Let me just show you real quick. Um, that is going to be again that thing here. Okay. Can you see that? Yes, you can. I'm going to bump it to 220. Better. And I'm going to be, I'm just like running this code here. And I need to bring as well my advice of my, um, it's not an emulator, right? It is a real device. All right. Live app, yep. Okay. Okay, sounds about right. Cool, so uh, let me go to the about, that's going to be um, easier. I notice that my app is currently running and let's say that I would like to, a button is going to be visible, right? We've got a button element here, right? So what I want to do, I want first of all, uh, the background color to be a beautiful red. Okay, let me save that. And it's reloading, as you can see, now my, um, it's a live application, right? Now my button is red. Uh, I would like my button to have some uh, corner radius of what, 20 is good. So it's a bit more nice and round. Let's save that. Beautiful round button, right. Uh, what else can I do with this button? I can tell it to have a horizontal option to be a center and expense. It's going to be small and centered here. Uh, here we go. That, that's great. And I can keep going, right? If I wanted to add uh, here, for instance, a uh, BA low this button, what can I add? I can add uh, another, actually, a box view of one. That is how you um, create a height equal one. Uh, yes, and a uh, box view width equal 500. Can I see that? No, I can't. Uh, hold on, what's wrong with this one? Okay, let's try, let's try something else. Uh, lay down. A good test, and that should be. Cool, I've got the, yeah, so I've got the label here and, and that's great. And then I could do some fantastic UI, create a grid and so on and so on, uh, ultimately allowing you to um, develop your application super quickly without having to rebuild your application all, all the time, right? That is uh, pretty useful. It's been around for a while. So that's um, live reload. So hot reload. Uh, and um, let's have a look at something else. So now let's say that you, it's, your code is not made uh, with XAML or you like to change a view model. So real quick, um, a view model, what that is, it's kind of nice when you just uh, separate the user interface with the underlying data, right? Uh, so for instance, if I go into um, that page here, I browse, let's go there. This is the um, items page, that should be it, right? So here, the only thing it will have is just like, hey, that's a collection uh, of items that is just like for design time, right? If I just remove that, let's have a look and save that. There we go. It's going to do. Yeah, it's going to take it now from the uh, from the underlying uh, data. So, anyways, look at um, that code here. Um, it just says, "Hey, I've got a collection, which is like a repeater, a way just to repeat some uh, items." And uh, hey, the um, the source is coming from a uh, property called items. Now, I'm going to go to my view model item items view model. There you go. As you can see, there is a property called items, and this is the, basically how uh, this you would be able to render uh, this data. And in order to do it, you can just like, generate a certain amount of it here. We just get in the items from somewhere, and we can go down the bottom of this code, but ultimately you'll get some JSON and it will just be displayed there. That's great, but if I start changing my code that is around there, or even here, go to uh, definition, um, well, that's uh, to implementation, sorry. 
and uh, we want that one and then that is just like again getting those items and the items is going to be those guy there right i just like uh, mock them so now if i change that code that is not going to work because this uh, hot reload only works with um when the um user interface is being modified and that's it so let's have a look how we can do otherwise when the actual code is modified. Uh, and that is back to PowerPoint. Uh, I need to do this thing and make sure that everything is sent as we should. Yep, it looks nice and beautiful. So um, that was Hot Reload. So I hope you like it. It works like a charm. Hot Restart is a new kit on the block, so that is still in preview, but that allows you to do some true magic, which is, hey, your code is being modified. So um, ultimately, that is going to um, allow you just to quickly test the changes um, on your application, the same way that Hot um, re Reload is kind of uh, looking like, but behind the scenes, it's a bit different. But you'll be able to do some multiple file code edits, right? So, all, you know, like all the layer I've been to, right? But the user interface, and I, we went to the view model, that is uh, basically holding the property that's got the data for the items that were rendered on the user interface and that in turn was calling a service that in turn was getting some data generated by a simple mock piece of code right so you can change all that you can change your resources like resources means like uh, it could be video it could be fonts it could be uh, images that's that's your resources right styles uh, that's also your resources and then uh, all your references so what it does behind the scene, it pushes, it just, when you um, save, it will just like push all the new changes to the existing application bundle on the debug target, which result on a much faster build and deploy, uh, deploy cycle. So it is not exactly rebuilding everything that is just going to do a delta, if you want, and push it over. So the cool stuff about it, uh, especially if you are on the Xamarin um, uh, development uh, lifecycle um, part, uh, it uh, has a really nice side effect. The side effect is, I don't know if you've been developing some iOS applications already. Uh, if you use Xcode, well, you're going to do that on your, uh, you'll need a Mac, basically, in order just to uh, to, uh, to uh, debug, to run, and uh, to deploy your application to, um, uh, to your uh, local uh, device, your, your iPhone, right? Uh, what if you don't have a Mac, and you still would like to do some iOS development? Well, with Hot Restart, you can, because the side effect is you can actually plug a iOS phone, um, so an Apple phone, straight on your Windows device, and you will be able to push the application to uh, your uh, phone directly. Again, you heard me correctly, you don't, well, you cannot debug, but you can push uh, push the code there, right? That is pretty good, pretty, pretty good. So you'll be able to go through your application, you still won't be able to debug. So, but it's still pretty decent, I believe. Uh, I believe this is the only platform that allows you to do so. So again, you can deploy a um, iOS application to your iOS device without needing a Mac. Pretty cool, I'd say. Let's see that in action. Just a short video because that's uh, super beta and very easy uh, to uh, mess up during a live call. Uh, that's only a few seconds. So you can see here, I'm going just to be changing um, uh, some some code, which is unco uncommon some properties, right? And you can see that now, hot restart has been triggered for five seconds, six. Seven, eight, nine, okay, let's say 10 seconds for the first time, then it's much faster. You can see now that the temperature is showing properly as it should, before it was not there. Uh, by the way, on the second run, it's going to be much faster, maybe in the order of three seconds. Again, compare that with rebuilding the whole stuff from scratch, uh, that's, that's pretty decent. Right, let's keep going. So um, the other thing you can do with Xamarin or Xamarin form is, uh, I'm getting back my screen to make sure that everything is, is fine. J just to make sure so far so good, if you've got any question, uh, you can type something here, type something here. 
uh, I just posted that to the live Q&A. Any question, any issue, any concern, um, put it there and I'll be able just to, oh, to, no, I've got nothing new here. That's great. So no new questions. Let's talk about integration with uh, native applications. And uh, integration, yes, with native uh, SDK as well, where we had it. But let, let's start with a big one, .NET Embedding. So uh, .NET Embedding is pretty cool. It allows uh, to take your existing uh, .NET code. It could be just like C Sharp, F Sharp, you are into VB, eh, you know, VB is supported well, uh, as well. And um, that can be uh, consumed from other programming languages uh, in different environments. So uh, we are talking about Xamarin, uh, and that means that both iOS and Android, be it uh, C, uh, Objective-C uh, or Swift for iOS or Kotlin or Java, can basically take some piece of your .NET code and run it in a native application. So to, to um, make it clear, let's say that you've got an existing iOS or Android application, right? Uh, that um, you, you've been maintaining like for like a couple of years. And um, you would like to give it, a, to give a try to Xamarin, but you don't want to rebuild your whole application. What you want to do is just a piggyback on your existing application and continue the development, the new development in Xamarin uh, or, or even in Xamarin form, right? Well, you can do that. So what you'll do is just like create the views uh, with all the backend, with all the bits that you need um, for, um, for those new um, elements, those new features. And then you can basically add that to your native application. So let's say that the weather page that we saw a bit earlier, uh, you just take it as is, this piece of code, um, and you uh, want to put that into your application. You can do so, no problem. Um, so again, that allows you to continue to add components of, of Xamarin, of, the, of .NET, or just like whole pages where they're underlying functionality within your existing um, native application. It doesn't have to be Xamarin, it could be just a NuGet packages, but all the same, that is uh, absolutely possible. Um, what, what you can do as well uh, is um, consume um, packages, uh, let's say Kotlin or Java Android packages uh, or, um, or resources, same for iOS, be it uh, C Sharp, uh, sorry, uh, Objective C um, or Swift. Uh, you have some components that you really like and you say, well, they're native, I'll never be able to run that on Xamarin. Well, you can, of course, it's just very simple. You more or less have to uh, take the uh, package and more or less reference them and that will be working more or less out of the box. When I say more or less, you may have to uh, do a little manual input to kind of um, tie in with the uh, interface, like the headers really, with the headers, and just uh, to make it a little bit more um, .NET-like. Uh, this is how Xamarin is done, by the way. Xamarin is just using all those bridges between uh, Android and iOS, and just uh, basically create this shim that is going to be looking at uh, uh, what are the interfaces that we want to consume on iOS and Android, and we just say, hey, well, we're going to make it looking a little bit more like .NET-like, and then just like bind it together. So that's how the whole platform is done. Let's have a look. I've got a pretty bit of time. Uh, I think, so I'm, I'm overrunning a little, but I, um, I'm, it's okay. I'm almost done. So Xamarin Essential. Xamarin Essential is a, a now part of Xamarin form, and that allow you to uh, access most of your uh, device um, features um, we, uh, in a cross-platform way. So you don't have to build it for iOS and for Android. You can access it in, um, in a single unified way. So that will be something like uh, the device inform the phone dialer that with gyros, uh, the um, gyroscope that could be the, um, uh, the um, uh, screen lock, the compass, the uh, uh, SMS, file sharing, file system, accelerometer, everything is more or less there. So that allows you just to tap into most of the uh, sub devices of your, uh, of, your, um, uh, of your hardware and uh, yeah, and easily get what you want. So uh, for instance, a thing we do routinely is just check if uh, the network is of good quality or if they are not. Same for the Wi-Fi signal. Um, that would be some things. The GPS will be uh, the same way instead of uh, having to rewrite it differently for iOS and Android. It's just done in one way, simple. Now I'll touch quickly on how to share code with Blazor web app. I just mentioned it a bit earlier. 
So let's say that you want to build a new a mobile application, but you also have uh, want to have a, a native web um, application with it that does either exactly the same thing or a subset of it, or just like piggybacking some functionality. You may uh, want to have an admin site uh, for your administrator to administer the application, and then your application will be native for your end users, right? But you don't really want to uh, reinvent things twice. Well, uh, we got WebAssembly. Uh, you must, have, you, hopefully you've heard of it for, uh, for, for now, it's been around for a while. It's definitely implemented by uh, all uh, browsers now up to, I believe, 100%, right? So that's a binary instruction format for a stack-based uh, virtual machine. So that's for the browser. Ultimately, that allows you, uh, think about it, running some um, native code within within the browser. So uh, instead of using only JavaScript, if you want to uh, use Rust, or if you want to use Golang, or if you want to use C Sharp, or F Sharp, or anything else, well, you can uh, code um, your cl client side with it. So it, it's no longer uh, the only realm of JavaScript. So it's portable um, compilation target for high-level languages like C++ and Rust. It's an open standard. And why would we use it? Well, because instead, uh, first of all, you, JavaScript may not be your thing, and JavaScript is a bit, a bit slow. That is extremely fast. Um, and at present, for the mono world, we are uh, not even talking about ahead of time. That means that it is still interpreted. Uh, once the AOT part will be done, that is going to be it used to be 30 times faster. Now we're down to 23 times times faster, but still, uh, the performance is stupid. Uh, uh, you, um, at, at the same application, uh, something running on WebAssembly and something running just in plain old JavaScript can be as little as maybe 10 times faster to maybe a thousand times faster. So if you want to do some operations such as uh, um, any kind of machine learning that is kind of processing dependent, you can do that client side um, using WebAssembly or you can just code your whole web application with WebAssembly. So Blazor is built, I talked about it a bit earlier, built on the MonoWASM runtime. For It's got a server-side um, component to it, but I'm more, more interested into the WebAssembly side of it. So use the SPNet uh, Razor Simplex syntax, and that's a .NET Core you know and love. Uh, that is. Uh, the, it's already a general release for the server component. For the WebAssembly, that is going to be uh, with .NET 5, which is around the corner. Right, uh, how can you share your code? So, uh, in the traditional Xamarin Inform application, you will have um, some views, which is a UI, like the XAML we saw, or the coded uh, UI, and view models, which is again separated the data from the user interface, and then uh, tell the user interface, hey, can I grab this piece of data, please, by using binding, let's say, right? For a single page application, similarly, you'll have a page, which is pretty much uh, kind of the equivalent of the views, and components which is a bit of page with a view, it's a bit like page which will have view and potentially view model. You can separate it as well, you don't need to keep your actual logic in the same file as your UI in, in Blazor, it can be separated. So now, let's say you only have your view and view model does only one thing, it's going to be talking to this shared um, library, which will have all the service, so all the services we need, either services to call your device or just to, uh, um, to uh, get some data uh, from, um, from a REST, a REST <coughs> API or, or, um, or anything else, uh, somewhere to, play, to define your models, which is your object, such as uh, this is a, a hotel, and a hotel has got a name, it's got a description, it's got rooms, and so on and so on. Uh, it's going to also say the state of your application, so the state of your UI, whether a button is enabled or disabled, or uh, whether just, uh, again, uh, these uh, text box have been populated with something. Um, it will also save, uh, uh, contain the styles that you can apply both uh, to your mobile application and um, your web application. Why? Because Xamarin Forms uh, supports CSS, by the way, so you can uh, reuse that all the same. And um, all the dependencies, all the NuGet packages, all your references can just be, uh, again, in this shared component, along with your tests. So that means that if you've got a test that is going down to a view model, which ultimately will test your services and the model, well, run your test again that. And uh, you will need only one suite of tests, uh, at least. 
uh, of um, of a unit test um, uh, to service both your Xamarin form and your spy application, then I believe that you will need to have some kind of um, <clears throat> uh, of uh, UI test running on Xamarin form. We'll see that a bit later, and also test running uh, uh, on your spa uh, by using something like Cypress, for instance. Uh, by the way, we've been open sourcing some libraries that service both sides of that of, of that thing: uh, UI test for Xamarin form and uh, also UI test using both using uh, Cucumber um, paradigms. And now I'm just going to finish that part to show you um, a couple of beautiful UI that you can achieve with Xamarin form. Again, it's exactly like native because it is native. And then we'll take a break because I talk too much. So there we go. This is a simple music player done with Xamarin form. Uh, looks nice, looks slick, uh, very, very nice and modern. And that's just like a simple video uh, browser. Could look like Netflix. Super simple to do with Xamarin Forms. Uh, that is just like a, a simple uh, restaurant application. It looks a bit like a McDonald's. Yep, that's correct. But again, it's nice and it's slick. Uh, you can just create some very simple animation with Xamarin Form. Like for instance, there is a simple component that is a transition view that allows you to click on an item and then kind of zoom in to create the details like we've just been seeing here. It's kind of nice. One of my favorite one, that part. Um, yep, or just like a, some nice shopping list with some nice slick animation. Again, uh, the point of mobile native mobile application is just to provide great user experience in order to get your users to stick. So by providing them a very simple application, it depends if it's line of business, that's, that's a different matter, I suppose. But for end users uh, that are there in the wild that are waiting to um, um, consume your application, uh, you want those applications to be delightful and just uh, not only functional. And that's how it makes all the difference and how your users will be sticking back to that application. That, that is uh, new, um, um, what is that called? New, new morphing. Uh, so uh, that is an inverted, maybe upcoming uh, UI uh, paradigm that um, kind of having, instead of having floating elements, they are kind of popping out of your screen like if they are actual buttons. Uh, that is the next step in UI design. But that is pretty, working again pretty, pretty cool with Xamarin. Right, uh, the best place to learn about Xamarin is Microsoft Learn. Uh, you have uh, a lot of courses that will be able to run you through not all, but like uh, quite a lot of uh, pieces that we went through this session. Um, Microsoft Learn will have interactive step-by-step -step exercises and you'll get some uh, quizzes and get some achievements. So, uh, yeah, and it's all free. Uh, if you want to check out more information, examine.com uh, is still there. Docs.microsoft.com, fantastic, uh, fantastic, just like a repository for anything Microsoft, uh, slash uh, Xamarin, and then .net and Microsoft.com uh, slash learn from Xamarin for um, Xamarin Learn. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to take a 15 minutes break and I'll see you straight after that. Uh, so uh, I'll be back like at 55, we're running 10 minutes late, uh, but just I will be between 50 and 55 past. Um, ah, questions. I've got two questions. Does the other user need to update the application after the hot restart? Does the other user need to update the apps after the hot restart? Um, I'm not sure what is meant by um, other users. Um, so you are a developer and you're developing your mobile application uh, and uh, you are going to do some change to your code. Uh, and then uh, that is just uh, when you save it, that is going to hot restart the application quite quickly. So the first time around is just maybe up to 10 seconds, but the second time around is going to be like two, three seconds. Um, but that's only you. So if you, you mean like if you are in a live, uh, live share session, uh, I haven't been trying that in a live uh, share session, but otherwise um, hot restart is just like for your own, own development. Do the other needs to update the app after hot restart? That's the same question. Uh, Dean, uh, do, does that answer your question? 
So for, for um, hot reload again, this is simply, uh, for example, to update the user interface uh, as uh, as you go. Just save and the uh, changes are going to be reflected on your all uh, your simulators and emulators. So again, something that is nice, you can have just like, a, I don't know, 20 devices connected to your workstation and you can also have a couple of simulators and emulators. And whenever you are just like triggering uh, by saving, it will just like refresh on all these devices which is pretty, pretty nice. Uh, for, uh, again, hot reload, um, uh, hot restart, sorry, um, that will allow you to change the code, the actual call, uh, code and resources of uh, multiple files. And then instead of taking like uh, 20 seconds or more just to refresh your application, first time maybe up to 10 seconds, second time three, three seconds. I hope that answered your question. Any other question? Then, then I'll take a break and uh, let's meet in 10, 10, 10 15 minutes. Um, uh, yep, and we'll talk about um, uh, App Center, how to uh, how to manage your application, how to perform uh, some uh, UI testing. Uh, we'll touch on uh, behavior-driven development with Xamarin, and then look at analytics and as force update and uh, crash reporting and so forth. That's going to be no slides, just demo.